Hello everyone, and welcome to this Getting Started tutorial for topology optimization using ANSYS Discovery. Let's get started. If this is your first time using Discovery, please be sure to review all the slides on the welcome screen, as there is a lot of great information that will help you get acclimated with using the tool. Once you've navigated to the end, you can simply click Open Homepage or click the X in the top right corner of the welcome screen window. From here, we need to import our geometry, and to do so, we can navigate up to Browse, select the drop-down arrow, and choose Open Geometry File. From here, let's select the Automotive Bracket Housing and choose Open. By default, your geometry will load up into the Explore mode, which is the mode we need to be in to access our topology optimization simulation capabilities. Now that the geometry has been imported, we can begin to set up our topology optimization simulation. But first, let's go ahead and review our informational message. When importing large assemblies composed of many components, we suppress all objects on import for physics. So it's important for you to include the objects that you need to simulate on in your simulation. So to do so, you can navigate up to our geometry tree up here on the left, and you can see that these objects have the suppression icon located next to them. This is the red circle with a line through it. And to activate them, you can simply click this object here, and you'll notice it turns to a green crosshair. The secondary way to do so is you can left click on an object, then you can right click and say include in simulation to select that specific body, or you could say include all in simulation. Or the third way is to use our quick scope tool, which is available on our ribbon in the simulation tab on the far left side. So once I've clicked this, you'll notice that all of the objects here are grayed out, indicating that none of them are included in the physics simulation. So to activate them individually, we can select this rear plate, the center bracket, which we'll be optimizing. We'll also select the oil filter, as well as this retaining strap. From here, we can have Discovery automatically hide all of our suppressed objects by navigating to the right side of our heads-up display, selecting the double arrows, and clicking Hide Excluded Bodies at the very bottom. Now, if I hit Escape, you'll notice that all of my hardware is now hidden and suppressed. So from here, we can begin to set up our static structural simulation. So let's go ahead and rotate our object to the rear, where we can select this rear backing plate in which we want to apply a support. You can apply a boundary condition using the ribbon commands, where you can select this drop down and choose a variety of different conditions. Or you can use our hex, which clicking on it exposes our halo. And in this case, we can go up to our structural cogwheel here, indicating our structural conditions, and we can choose a fixed support. So to apply the support, we can hit enter on our keyboard or simply click this check mark. Once we've done so, you'll notice down here at the bottom that our simulation information display now has a structural cogwheel indicating that we are running a structural analysis. That is because in Discovery, we are running our optimizations purely on the structural domain. Now let's go ahead and determine the loading in which this center white bracket here will be optimized. Now to close our heads up display, just hit escape a few times. Now the method in which we are going to be loading the center white bracket is going to be due to the gravitational loading of this oil filter. So to apply this, you simply can navigate over to the left side of our screen where we can see our physics tree, where you can see the gravity condition. You'll notice that it is included in the tree, but if hovering over it shows that it is excluded because we have the suppression icon turned on next to it. Now, if we want to activate this so the gravity or the self-weight of this oil filter will load up this bracket, we can simply click this object here, turning it green, indicating that gravity is participating in our simulation. And you can see here now, if I hover over this, that the arrow is pointing downwards in the negative Z direction. So this is indicating that gravity is set up properly. Now, to make things a little bit easier to follow, I'm gonna go ahead and rename our simulation one to Z gravity, just so I know as the user which simulation is going to be loading in which direction. So simply, I can click simulation one, and I can just hit Z and rename it gravity. Just hitting enter to confirm. Now, in many structural applications, specifically during topology optimization, you're going to have a wide variety of load cases to consider for your optimized geometry. So it's very easy to set up multiple load cases here in Discovery. All you need to do is simply click the arrow above our simulation information display, where you can click New or Duplicate our simulation. So in this case, I just want to duplicate it. 
So just for the sake of example here, I want to create my gravitational loading in the negative x direction. But first, let's go ahead down here to the bottom where we can select Z gravity copy, indicating that we duplicated our first one. And let's just go ahead and make this negative x gravity. This is just a little bit of bookkeeping to make things a bit easier. Now, as a user, we need to indicate the gravity is going to be going in the negative x direction, or this can simply be considered as a gravitational load or an acceleration load. So I can go ahead over here. You can see I just clicked this three dots, which indicates um, a variety of directions in which I can apply this gravity load. So in this case, let's choose negative x. Or if I wanted to enter specific values for acceleration, I could double click where I could enter values here as well. But in this case, let's go ahead and leave this as negative x. So let's hit escape two times to get out of our heads up display. Now let's go ahead and scope our topology optimization to the static structural simulations in which we've created. So I, I think it's important, it's not necessarily required, but I always like to have my topology optimization on my first simulation. So to do so, all you need to do, as I mentioned before, is just click on this double arrow where you can access your other simulations and select the C gravity. So once we're back to this initial simulation, we can activate topology optimization by selecting it up here in the ribbon. So simply clicking this, we'll do a few things here. So on the left side of our screen here, let's take a look at our tree. We can see now we have an optimization object and a protected depth. Um, we also have a variety of pink areas all over our parts. And let's go ahead and review them. So this protected depth here is are the areas on your geometry that will be protected from removal during the topology optimization simulation. So for instance, you know, what you see here are areas that have contacts as well as supports and forces. So these are all of our physics boundary conditions. But you can see here that it's applying to all of my different objects here. But I only want to optimize this center bracket in our optimization. So to do so, we can select this icon here, select our center bracket, and then click the check mark. And you'll notice now that all of our protected regions are only focused on the center body, which can be seen related to our contacts. You can see how they are relating to those areas, as well as we have our fixed support on the rear, but this is not indicating a protection region because we're only optimizing this center body. Now, once we have this done, uh, we have our topology optimization heads up display open. We have the opportunity to go ahead and control a few different objects here. On, let's start with the left side. But on the left side here, we can control the objective of the optimization. As you can see, we have a variety of different options. For instance, the top one here is maximize stiffness, which is what we're going to be using in this application because we want to make this part as stiff as possible based on the loading conditions we supplied. But we do have some other options here if you have any other constraints in your application, maybe tied to noise vibration and harshness or some other modal requirements. But for this application, let's just go ahead and leave this as maximize stiffness. Now on the right side of our heads up display, this is where we control a little bit more about the topology of the geometry that is created. Specifically, um, we have the opportunity to go ahead and include simulations. So this allows us to select other simulations to apply the load cases here that are going to be considered for the optimization. So let's go ahead and check this negative x gravity. And you can see here, it's now blue, which is an indication that it is selective and is going to be contributing to the optimization. Now, the other components in which we can activate here are going to be our manufacturing constraints. Now, to activate this, you can simply click this manufacturing constraints object where it's going to open up a list of our manufacturing constraints. Now, to activate any of these, you can simply click on them and you'll notice that they get added into our physics tree here on the left. And so this allows us to go ahead and edit those values directly in our ribbon without having to over, excuse me, in our tree without having to open our heads up display. Maximum thickness, pull direction, and table direction are all important for setting up your simulation constraints so that you can produce a part that is manual, uh, manufacturable per your industry. Now, in some industries, additive manufacturing is an acceptable solution, but other industries, it might be a bit too cost prohibitive. So we've included these manufacturing constraints to help you navigate the optimization of your part so that you can get a part that is manufacturable and cost effective. 
Max thickness is great for injection molding applications because it controls the maximum thickness of features. So if you're injection molding parts, you want to make sure that they cure relatively at the same pace. So maximum thickness is a great object to have. Pull direction can be a bi-directional or a single directional pull. So you can see it indicates arrows once I go ahead and add them. So this will control the directionality of the shapes that are created or the apology. So maybe if you're doing a case where you have a molded part and you want the mold to open a specific direction, this is a great way to do so. And then the last two here are overhang protections. This is great for topology opt optimization for additive manufacturing. And then we have this table direction here. And so the table direction specifies the orientation of your part for three axis milling. So you can see here that it would indicate that I'm, I'm milling from my Z direction, but maybe if I wanted to make this part, I would want it in the negative Y direction here. But for this application, let's just go ahead and leave our defaults and we're not gonna add any manufacturing constraints. So let's hit escape a few times. So the last things I want to cover here are controlling our protected depth. So like I mentioned before, these are areas that are tied to physics conditions, whether they be loading or contacts or supports. And you'll notice that they have a certain amount of volume supplied to them or a thickness offset from those mating faces. And you can control the size of this pink region by changing this protect the depth value. So you notice here, if I change it to 20, it gets much larger. And if I bump it down to one millimeter, it gets much, much smaller. So let's just leave this as one millimeter. Now in some applications, it's important to preserve certain features of the original geometry, maybe for connection purposes or for some other reason, but they aren't explicitly tied to a specific physics condition. So we have the opportunity here in Discovery to go ahead and create our own protected regions regardless of the physics conditions in that area. So simply, if you want to protect a region, let's just say this top face, you can select a drop down and our topology optimization object up here in our simulation tab up in the ribbon, and you can choose this protected depth. From here, let's go ahead and just select this top face for the sake of example, and let's put in a value of five millimeters. So as soon as I enter that value and hit enter on my keyboard, you'll notice if I zoom in that we have a protected region at the top of our part. So we can quickly review this where we have a protected region at all of our contact intersections, as well as one up here on the top. But like I mentioned a little bit earlier, let's just go ahead and run with a lot of defaults here just to see some really organic shapes. So let's just go ahead and right click on the object in our tree and click delete. I'm just gonna hit H on my keyboard to get back to the home view, because at this point, I'm ready to solve my topology optimization simulation. And to do so, we can navigate down to the bottom right corner of our screen into our results arc, where we can click the solve icon. We'll check back here shortly after this topology optimization simulation has completed. Now that this simulation is finished, we can begin to do a bit of post-processing on this optimized structure. So you notice here, if we take a look at this geometry, a significant amount of material was removed. So if we take a look at our tree here really quick, you'll notice that the optimization says 60%, indicating that we took off 60% of the mass of this part or the volume. So if you ever wanted to change this, please feel free to go ahead and change this, you know, specific to your application. So once we've created the contour of our part, you know, it's important to create an actionable CAD file that which we can work on. So to do so, you can navigate down to the bottom right corner of your screen where you can see your results arc. And I like to pause my topology optimization simulation before I do so. And you can select this add optimized body to model button. And so once I do so, it's gonna create a faceted geometry. So this faceted geometry is an STL file, which is kind of the, the basis of topology optimization programs here. So this is something you often send to your slicer that which you can create a G code on, but it might be a little bit challenging to work with from an original CAD perspective. So we have a variety of other options to help you out with that process here in discovery. So let's go ahead and turn off our contours by selecting this object here in our results arc so that we can better visualize our topology optimization object. So let's actually go ahead and left click to select this object, right click and say hide others. So this gives us a better view of the object that was created. 
So you can see here now, it's a pretty blocky representation of the original geometry or the organic shape that was created from our topology optimization simulation. So we have a couple options here to help clean this up. So let's go ahead over to our tree here on the top left corner where we can see we have a faceted geometry that was added to our domain. So I can simply select this object, right click where I have a variety of other objects here that I can choose to do a variety of different operations. So the first one here is create a validation simulation. So if you ever would like to go ahead and create a simulation to maybe under, better understand the stresses or strains or deformations in the part, you can simply click this button here to create a new simulation on your optimized structure so you can better understand it. We have this opportunity here to smooth out the facets to get back to more organic shape. And plus we have the opportunity here to convert to solid. So this is a really nice way to go ahead and convert it into a BREP or a boundary representation CAD that is much more actionable in your native CAD format. And when we do this conversion to solid, we're making sure to preserve your original boundary condition faces or contacts locations here as well. So just for example here, I'm gonna go ahead and smooth these out and we can go ahead and take a look at the difference once this is completed here. Now that our smoothing operation has finished, we can review all the different objects that are presented here. On the left side, we have our original design, this very blocky bracket, traditional subtractive manufacturing bracket, you know, probably way over design. In the middle, we have our original faceted geometry, which is optimized at a 60% mass reduction. You can see it here in our tree with respect to this original design. And the last one here is the smoothing operation after we optimize this structure. So it's very important to make sure you smooth out your faceted geometries after you add the optimized body to model to make sure that you can accurately capture all the organic features of this optimized structure. Thank you for watching this getting started tutorial on topology optimization and Nancy's discovery, and we hope that you found it helpful. Thank you and good luck.